Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. Warning. Calling all fellas and girls. Calling all fellas and girls. Listen carefully. Nutrition authorities say breakfast should furnish from one quarter to one third of the day's total food requirements. Teacher says eat a good breakfast. And mom says eat a good breakfast. Fellas and girls, there's good advice. Eat a good breakfast. And you can't go wrong if you eat plenty of cereal, fruit, milk, bread, and butter. So tomorrow, enjoy a delicious bowl full of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk and fruit. There's no beating this eating. Talk about tasting swell. Mmm, boy. What's more, for extra health benefits, crisp, tender wheat or rice shot from guns has restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yes, and talk about flavor. Just you try them. You'll love to eat... Quaker puffed rice. And Quaker puffed wheat. It was a sharp, cold evening in early October when the river packet Lady Bell made its way on the last trip north to Dawson. Sergeant Preston, with the great dog King beside him, walked toward the bow of the boat to view the ever-changing magnificence of the Yukon Territory that lay before them. As they approached the rail, Preston noticed a young man and woman standing close and gazing intently at the shimmering northern sky. The young woman turned... Then, as her eyes rested on King, she involuntarily uttered an exclamation. Oh, oh there, that big dog. Don't be nervous, please. King won't hurt you, would you, fella? Gosh, he's sure a fine dog. Say, you're with the Royal Northwest Mounted Police, aren't you? That's right. I'm Sergeant Preston. Well, I'm Ben Yancey, and this is my wife, Ann. How do you do? I'm glad to meet you. Same here, Sergeant. Thank you. You uh, new to the Yukon? Uh, yes, we are. We, uh... We had a little store down in Juneau, but we sold out and we're going to Selkirk. I see. You'll be getting there just before the winter sets in. I know. Frankly, I'm not too happy about going to Selkirk. The idea was kind of sudden. Oh, you'll we... get used to it, Ann. You see, sir, I I inherited a gold claim. That's why we're going up there. Oh, really? Yes, an uncle of mine went up there two years ago. He died last month and left his claim to me. Ben had a letter from a lawyer in Selkirk saying the claim had been willed to him and well, it was necessary to come there to settle things. Well, I hope for your sake, Mr. Yancey, that it's a prosperous claim. Golly, I hope so, too. We didn't get much for selling our store in Juneau, and we've about used up all of it making this trip. I see. I haven't stopped at Selkirk since last spring, but uh, I'm going after my dog team now in Dawson. And I'll head back through Selkirk. I'll look you up then. It'll be about ten days from now. Good. We'll know more about things then, Sergeant. Yes, and we'll be very glad to see you again. We won't know anyone there in Selkirk. Oh, by the way, I know quite a few people in the territory. Perhaps I knew your uncle. Say, we're nearing Selkirk now, Ann. Come on, we have to get our things together. Yes, we'll soon be docking. Oh, let's hurry, Ben. Goodbye, Sergeant. Bye, King. <laughs> Goodbye, Sergeant. Bye. See you again soon. Arriving at Selkirk, Ben and Ann Yancey left the boat and went to the hotel. The following morning, they walked the short distance to the office of lawyer Frank Davis, who had written a letter to Ben. Oh, I hope Mr. Davis is in his office. We'll soon know. Come on. Are you lawyer Davis? Uh, yes, that's right. Gee, you must be Ben Yancey. That's right. 
This is my wife. Well, well, I'm glad to see you both. Sit down and we'll attend to business right away. Here. Here's a chair for you. All right. Thank you. And you, sir. Thanks. Uh, here's the uh, letter you sent to me, Mr. Davis. Oh, yes. You uh, have a cigar, Ben? No, thanks. Your uh, uncle describes you to me quite well, so I'm sure of your identity, Ben. Yes, sir, Ed Morrow and I were good friends. Too bad about his death. Uh, <clears throat> pneumonia it was that took him off. Oh, poor Uncle Ed. Of course, he was getting along in years, but he was wise enough to make a will, and he appointed me to take care of things and get it settled. How long will it take, Mr. Davis? Mm, we can settle things right away, Ben. A couple of papers to sign, that's all. This tin box contains what cash and personal effects your uncle left. I'll open it. It contains his watch and chain and $50 in cash, as you can see. $50? That's right. Of course, there's the gold claim. I'll take you out there right away. But well, we thought if he had a gold claim, he... Must have left more than $50. Oh, I'm sorry if you came up here with the wrong impression. Perhaps I should have been more explicit in my letter. Of course, there's a cabin out there to live in with its furnishings. How, how far is it from town? Oh, about five miles east of here, Mrs. Yancey. Gosh, I, I don't have much left after our trip. and well, We wouldn't have any transportation there either. You'll need a sled and dogs, I suppose. I uh, may be able to arrange so that you can get them if if you decide to stay. Ben, what are we going to do? We, we can't make a living at that claim if your uncle got so little from it. I know. But I guess there's nothing we can do now but uh, try it. That's the spirit, Ben. Here, sign these papers, and then I'll get horses and take us out to the cabin. Ben signed the papers, which showed that he had received his legacy from the lawyer. Then leaving Selkirk on horses, the three of them soon arrived at the cabin. Oh, 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 oh. oh heavens, is, is that the cabin? Well, that's it, ma'am. <coughs> You'd uh, better look around. Oh, gosh, it's pretty weather beaten. Hey, honey, let me help you. All right, thank you. Oh, it needs repairing. I'll unlock the door. It doesn't seem possible that Ben's uncle could live in a place like this. Look there on the table. Oh, Uncle Ed's picture. Like the one he sent us. Uh, I guess this was his place, all right. Golly, Anna, I don't know what to say. If I had the money to take you back, we wouldn't think of staying. Oh, no, no. No need to feel like that, Ben. <clears throat> I tell you what. You stay here a couple of days or so and look things over. The... Uh, Claim is out and back. Oh, but we haven't food and we... Well, I stocked a bit of food in here knowing you'd be along on that boat. There's enough for a few days or so. Gosh, Mr. Davis, I... I wish you had told us what to expect. Yes, yes, I guess I should have. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Stay here a few days. I'll leave two of the horses with you. Then if you don't think you can make a go of it, maybe I can find someone to buy out the claim. Uh, for at least enough to get you back to Juno. I, uh, I'm sure I can get a few hundred dollars for it. Well, that's awfully kind of you, Mr. Davis, but well, we can't Now, say you... no more about it, Mrs. Yancey. I feel a bit guilty about this matter, and I know I can push through the deal in time for you to take the return boat at the end of next week for Whitehorse. That is, if you want to leave. Well, we'll stay a couple of days, and like you say look things over. Good. And if you decide to go back, just come on into town and let me know. There's a shed out back where you can stable the horses, Ben. They'll be safe there from the wolves. <clears throat> wolves? Well, now I shouldn't have frightened you. As a matter of fact, the wolves won't bother you around here at least until after the snow sets in and they get hungry. Well, I'll uh, get back to town now. Thanks for everything, Mr. Davis. Well, that's all right. And if you want to see me, just ride on into town. Goodbye to you. Oh, ben. 
Then what are we going to do? No, no, honey. Take it easy. Let's give it a try. Maybe there might be gold in the claim. Who knows? If things don't work out, we'll accept his offer and go back on the boat. That afternoon, Ben went out and looked over the claim. Even to his inexperienced eyes, it showed little promise. Yet he was determined to give it a try. He found no tools with which to work, so taking one of the horses, he rode into town to the trading post. When he entered and approached the counter, the old storekeeper looked him over critically. I want to buy a pick and shovel. Oh, a pick and a shovel, is it, huh? Sure, and you're new here, aren't you, mister? That's right, I am. Well, I'll get the things you want. <coughs> when did you get in the cell car? <coughs> there you are. Like I just said, when did you get in? Came in on the boat last night. Oh. Well, that's ten dollars for the pick and ten for the shovel, mister. Oh. Uh, well, there it is. My name's Mike Rooney. What's yours? Ben Yancey. Ben Yancey, eh? You fixing to work a claim? Yes, my wife and I have a claim about five miles east of here. Five miles east, you say? Great day, you don't mean that worn-out claim where that cabin is, with the porch roof rotted off? Yes, that's it. Well, no. I hate to get you down, son. But an old sourdough gave up that claim some time ago. It's a dead claim. I hope you didn't put any money into getting it. No, it was left to me. <laughs> well, that's sure something to leave to somebody, all right. And you'd better not waste your time trying to work that claim, Yancey. Is there anything else? No, thanks. That's all. I'll be in again. Goodbye. Goodbye, son, and good luck. You'll sure need it. We'll continue our story in just a moment. I am thinking of something. Can you tell me what it is? Gee, are we going to play that swell game again? Yeah, like we did the other day. Right, kids. Remember, you just asked me questions. I'll answer right or wrong. And you see how quick you can guess just what it is I'm thinking of. Ready? Okay. Let's see. Is it something we all know about? Right, Billy. What I have in mind is really famous. Gee, would you be thinking again, like last time, of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Right? No, but you're warm. Does it have anything to do with breakfast? It sure does. Oh, gosh, I'm stunned. Well, does it have anything to do with Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice? Right, Billy. You're really warm. In fact, you're getting hotter than a two-dollar pistol. Oh, does it make a loud noise? That's a bang-up question, fella. You're right on the bullseye with both barrels. I got it. It's the gun that shoots Quaker Puffed Wheat. And Quaker Puffed Rice. Right you are, kids. Yes, I was thinking of the gun that shoots Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The swell-tasting, ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. And fellows and girls, for a breakfast that helps you start the day with a bang, do this tomorrow morning. Treat yourselves to a heaping bowl full of delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk and fruit. You need a good breakfast to help you through those long hours at school and play. And there's added food value, too, in Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Both delicious kinds have restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, these king-size kernels are loaded with nut-like flavor. They're crisp and tender. They're shot from guns, exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Just make no mistake, wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Ask for the big red and blue package with the famous smiling Quaker man on the front. That way, you'll be sure of getting the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. After leaving the trading post, Ben rode back to the cabin with the tools he had purchased. By the time he reined up at the cabin, his thoughts were in a turmoil. Oh, oh there, oh. It's off here. My C, 
see you both are too for me to work the claim there. Maybe after all we might be... Hang on, I don't know what to think. What do you mean? Well, the way the old storekeeper talked when he found out we had this claim out here. What did he say about it? That's just it. I don't understand it at all. He said an old sourdough gave up this claim some time ago. That it was a dead claim. A dead claim? <laughs> yes. He said I'd better not waste my time trying to work it. Then as I was leaving, he wished me luck, saying I'd sure need it. Well, but well, why on earth did your uncle go to the trouble of making a will to leave it to him? Oh, I don't know. I- I'm confused about the whole thing. Ben... Why not go into town to see Mr. Davis about the offer he made? We'll starve to death here if the claim really isn't any good. Davis is just trying to be nice to us. We'll be taking advantage of him to take his money for this place. Oh, I'll dig the claim for a few days. Maybe Uncle Ed did make a strike just before he died and didn't tell anyone about it. Believe me, Ann, if there isn't any gold out there, we're really on the spot. During the next few days, the temperature dropped and heavy snows fell. It was the first part of the following week when Sergeant Preston and King, returning from Dawson, stopped with the dog team in front of the trading post. Looking! Hi, Rusty! Hanna! Come on, fella. Hello, Mike. Where, where? Sergeant Preston and King. (laughs) Ah, It's good to see you again. King's glad to see you again, Mike. We haven't been here in Selkirk for some time. Sure, and we missed you too, that we did. Well, what brings you here now, Sergeant? I stopped in town to see a young couple I met on the boat. Maybe you can tell me where to find them. Well, now, maybe I could if I knew their names. Ben Yancey and his wife. Ben inherited a gold claim around here, he told me. Ben Yancey. Say, now, there was a young fella by that name come in here a while back. Bought a pick and shovel. Oh? Uh-huh. Poor chap. He sure looked downcast and I told him about the claim he inherited. He could dig out there till doomsday without turning up as much as a grain of gold. Really? As strange as Uncle should bother making a will if that's the case. Those two young people were almost without funds, they told me. By the way, uh, who owned that claim, Mike? Sure, and nobody's been near the place for nigh onto a year, I'd say, Sergeant. What? The old sourdough who used to have it gave up, went to White Horse. Oh, well, that's odd. Ben told me his uncle died about a month ago and left everything to Ben. The only one who's died around here was old Ed Morrow. It was a little over a month ago. Ed Morrow. He owned a nugget mine, as I recall. That's right. Now, if it was something like that the Yanceys inherited, they'd really have something. Yes, I... Mike, is there a lawyer here in town now? Sure is, Sergeant. A fella named uh, Frank Davis. Oh, him and Morrow was thick as two peas. That they were. I see. Thanks, Mike. You've given me an idea. And if I'm right, King and I will have to move fast. Come on, boy. Let's go, King. (laughs) Meantime, while Sergeant Preston and King were at the trading post, a man hurriedly entered Lawyer Davis's office. Well, what's your hurry, Hank? Uh, the wolves chasing you. You better stop (laughs) puffing on that cigar and listen to what I have to say, Frank. Well, what is it? I just saw Sergeant Preston and his dog go into the trading post. What about it? If he should happen to run into that fellow Yancey, he might ask questions, seeing as how Yancey's a stranger around here. You better do something about closing that deal in quick. Yes, I guess you're right at that. If I can get Yancey to sign over his claim to me, I'll be safe. Yeah, but the fool's still trying to work that dead claim out there. I thought he'd give up the now and come in and take up your proposition. Uh, so did I. <laughs> The only thing to do now is take the paper and the money and go out there. You better do some fast talking. The last boat south gets here in the morning, and they ought to be on it. I'll talk them into it. After they sign, I'll take them by a shortcut over to your place near the Nugget Mine for the night and then see that they take the boat in the morning. Better go out back, get your dog team together, and head for Yancey's. Better follow the back trail out of town, too. Since you're fairly new around town, that Mountie might ask you some questions if he met up with you. All right. I'll take the paper with me. I'll put on my parka and get going. Now, uh, lock up the office after I leave and then keep your eyes on Preston. Davis left by the back way. And it was about five minutes later that Sergeant Preston and King stopped out front. Hank, who was just about to leave, heard Sergeant Preston stop. He sat down behind the desk and waited. 
Well, Sergeant, come right in. Thanks. Are you the lawyer, Frank Davis? No, Davis is out of town. Went to Dawson on the last boat on business. I see. Well, that's possible. As I remember, several people did get on here at Selkirk. I was on that boat, but I don't know Davis by sight. Oh, too bad. If you had any business with him, you could have talked to him then. Yes. You sure Davis went to Dawson? Oh, yes, I'm sure. Sorry I missed him. Oh, uh, by the way, can I offer you a cigar? No, thanks. I don't smoke them. I don't know why. Well, then why did Who you... are you and what are you doing here? I'm Hank Greenway. I sort of look after things here while Davis is away. Besides playing office boy to Davis, what else do you do around Selkirk? Now, listen here, Molly. No, you listen to me. Play it, King. I've seen you around town before, and I happen to know your office manager for the Nugget Mining Company. Well, what if I am? You told me you didn't smoke cigars. That smoldering cigar butt there tells me someone left here in a hurry just before I came in. You lied about Davis being in Dawson, didn't you? Now, see here. You have no right to I'll come in. I'll take a look out back. Now, wait a minute. Oh, King. King. Davis evidently left in a hurry with his dog team. I have some questions to ask him, so I'll trail him as for you, Greenway. Might want to ask you a few later. So stick around town till I get back. Come on, King. Up front, boy. On King! On Once more, it had begun to snow heavily. And not knowing where Davis was heading, Preston and King were slowed a bit as they tried to follow his trail in the storm. In their small cabin, Anne and Ben Yancey glanced at each other as they listened to the moaning of the wind outside. Ben, the last boat for Whitehorse leaves here tomorrow. I know, but if this storm keeps up, we couldn't use the horses to get to town. Oh, but maybe if we left right we now... Couldn't we couldn't chance it without a dog team, Anne. Oh, I guess I've been a fool not to have gone in and accepted Davis's offer before this, but I felt I that... I know. He... You felt that he was just being nice to us by making that offer. Yes, I'm sure of it. Nobody would want to buy this place. Oh, but we can't stay here. I, I can't stand it. Oh, Ben, you have to do something right away before it's too late. That awful wind and, and those wolves howling last night. I, I know how it affects you. Maybe we can... Oh, someone's coming. Hello. Hello there. Let me get inside. <laughs> came out in all this storm. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, I know the way out here blindfolded, Mrs. Yancey. I used to come often to see your uncle. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I've been so frightened. We, we must get away from here. Well, it's a good thing I came out then. My uh, offer still holds good if you want to accept it. In fact, I brought out the paper for Ben to sign if he wants to. Oh, yes, of course he'll sign it. Oh, but the boat. Suppose it doesn't come through. Oh, I'm... the boat will come through in the morning. The, the river hasn't iced up enough yet to stop it. But could we get to town all right? Yes, of course. I'll see to that. I uh, have the paper for you, Ben. And the pen. You'd uh, better read it first. I never let people sign things without reading them over. Read it, Ben, out loud. <laughs> I, Ben Yancey, do hereby give up all right and title to the Nugget Mine and other properties, real and personal, which are willed to me by Edward Morrow, to Frank Davis for the sum of $300. Of course, you can keep the watch and chain and the $50 you got, Ben. Oh, Mr. Davis, you're so good to us. That's right, he is. But what's this nugget mine mean, Mr. Davis? Well, that's the way this claim was registered, Ben. Your uncle wanted to give it a name. Oh, Jack. Uh, here's the pen. Thanks. Oh, sign it right there on that line. Mm -hmm. And can witness it. All right. There. Now you in. I'll yeah. be glad to. Uh, there, Mr. Davis. It's all uh, soft. Uh, well, wait a minute. As Sergeant Preston and King entered, the wind and a sudden gust blew the signed paper off the table across the cabin. Well, the paper. The wind blew it off the table. Uh, I'll get it. Get it, King. Get that paper. Folks. No, he won't. Get him away. Easy, King. Bring it here, boy. Oh, give me that paper. That's it. I'll report you to headquarters. Thanks, you have no right butting in on this transaction. The deal has been completed. Well, uh, this is an interesting document, Davis. Uh, Sergeant, why are you interfering? Mr. Davis is only trying to he help He's only trying to cheat Ben out of one of the richest mines in this territory. Oh, you the Nugget Mine, formerly owned by Ed Morrow. Uh, that's my uncle's name. I know. 
Did he give you the $300, Ben? Well, no, not yet. And the deal hasn't been closed, Davis. Huh? I'll just tear this paper up. <laughs> a bullet coming through the window had barely creased Preston's forehead, and he stood momentarily stunned. But the great dog, King, moved into action instinctively. With a deep-throated snarl, he moved back and then sprang. The dog went right through the window. I'll get that paper now. No, you won't. I'll get him, Ben. Get your, get your gun and watch him, Ben. All right. I've got it. I'll go see what King found. Kill me! Oh. I'm King. I'm Villa. Oh, he jumped me. He came through the window. My arm. Get inside, you. Get going. Who's he, Sergeant? Ben, this is Hank Greenway, manager, or I should say former manager, of the Nugget Mining Company. That's your company now. You you have nothing against this. Nothing. They both signed that paper of their own free will. As a lawyer, Davis, you should know the charge of attempted murder of a member of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police yeah. will stand up against both of you. Not to mention your attempt to take over the nugget mine via trickery. You're both under arrest. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I, I had no knowledge that Hank Greenway followed you out here to shoot at you. You told me to watch that, Mountie. You're just as much to blame as I am, Dave. Yes. Well, let the court decide that. Oh, does all this mean that we... that Ben did inherit something worthwhile, Sergeant? Yes, Mrs. Yancey, it does. Besides the nugget mine, Ben inherited a large home in Selkirk, if you want to stay there. Oh, Ben... Now we won't have to go back after all. If you hadn't been such a slowpoke, Davis, you'd have got them to sign that paper long Shut ago. Shut up. Good thing they didn't get you to sign it sooner, Ben. Both you and Anne might have suddenly disappeared. I've met men like Davis before. A disgrace to a fine profession. we will probably find he's been disbarred. You think you're smart, don't you? If it hadn't been for that dog, Hank could have finished you off with another shot. Luckily, King was here, though, Davis. And he outsmarted both of you. Oh, and... When I think how close you came to being killed, Sergeant, it makes me sure. I deserve that creasing as a lesson, Anne. As a lesson? Yes. I should have known Greenway would follow me out here from town. Gosh, I think you were plenty smart to figure things out and follow Davis here, Sergeant. Oh, thanks, Ben. But let's admit that King saved the day, that because of him we can say this case is closed. Hey, (laughs) fella? In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's program. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yes, fellas and girls, hurry and re-enlist in the Junior Red Cross. Be first to sign up again this year. Do your part to help the Junior Red Cross help other kids who don't get the breaks. Kids in hospitals, in orphanages, in foreign countries, and in our own country. Yes, do your part. Re-enlist in the Junior Red Cross. Join up first thing tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of Shadow. Shadow was the name of a fine dog owned by Constable Drake. King and I found Shadow beside the body of his dead master. That was the beginning of a manhunt. The killer's trail was blazed by acts of treachery, and when that trail divided, we found a problem that could never have been solved without the able assistance of King. Be sure to hear this exciting story Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.